Okay, hello, and welcome to this eSchool News webinar, Modernizing Your Return to School. My name is Kevin Hogan. I'm editor-at-large at eSchool News, and I'll be moderating this event. I'm excited to have you join us for what should be a very informative session. Today's webinar is sponsored by DocuSign. DocuSign helps organizations connect and automate how they prepare, sign, act on, and manage agreements. As part of the DocuSign Agreement Cloud, DocuSign offers e-signature, the world's number one way to sign electronically on practically any device from almost anywhere at any time. Today, more than 750,000 customers and hundreds of millions of users in over 180 countries use the DocuSign Agreement Cloud to accelerate the process of doing business and to simplify people's lives. Before I pass things off to our panelists, I'd like to take a minute to go over some of the features of the platform that we'll be using for this webinar. Today's event will be recorded, so you don't have to worry about missing a thing. Within a few days, you'll receive an email message that contains a link to the recorded webinar, along with a PDF of the slides. You can submit questions at any time during the presentation by clicking on the Q&A box. There will be at a time at the end of the presentation uh, for our speakers to address some of these questions. Uh, there's also a chat function that you can launch by clicking on it. Feel free to use this to contact someone from the eSchool News team if you have a technical question, but please don't use it to ask questions of our speakers. <clears throat> if you have a question for a speaker, use that Q&A box that I just mentioned. Uh, closed captioning is also available by clicking on the closed captioning tab. So with uh, those housekeeping items out of the way, let's get started with the presentation. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce uh, the folks that will be on the conversation today. First, there's Tom Vanderveld. He is a solution engineer for DocuSign. Tom is uh, based in the San Francisco Bay Area. He enjoys navigating prospects to a tailored solution that fits their unique use cases. He will be celebrating his Docuversary in September. Uh, next, there's Jeff Shelby. Jeff uh, is the regional vice president of public K-12 and local government uh, issues at DocuSign. Jeff has a, a master's degree in uh, public education and has a passion for helping community education programs thrive. He spent over four years as a teacher and district coordinator for social emotional learning programs for students. Uh, he has supported DocuSign customers for the past three years. He brings a passion to help school districts leverage industry leading technology to improve outcomes for all district stakeholders, <clears throat> pardon me, across the United States. And last but certainly not least, Andy Moxley. And he is the HR coordinator for Walton County School District. He has more than 16 years experience in both the private and public sectors. Uh, with Walton County School District, he supports nine elementary schools, over 200 substitutes, and all the coaching staff. And he is PHR and SHRM CP certified and holds an associate's and bachelor's degree in business administration. He's currently pursuing a master's in leadership and human resource development and expects to graduate from Louisiana State University in December. So Andy probably doesn't have many uh, hobbies on the side after that, right? So uh, what, a, what a great panel of, of folks that we have here. Uh, really looking forward to the conversation. I hope you are too. Uh, with that, I'll pass it over to Jeff. Hey, thank you so much, Kevin, and welcome everyone. Thank you for taking your time uh, and being here today with us. Uh, we express a lot of gratitude and empathy the last year and a year and a half has been a whirlwind. Um, so this session is totally about you and totally about us helping you serve the communities um, that you're part of, right? So two things we're gonna cover uh, before we get into the agenda and also the safe harbor slide for DocuSign. In education, my experience and everyone's experience on this panel and your experience, there is a purpose and there is a process to all that we do with our staff, with our schools, with the communities we serve. And so that's the tenets of today's discussion. Let's go ahead and move forward to the agenda. What you can expect is a brief overview from me about DocuSign and some challenges we're helping schools solve. Um, really excited to have Andy here from Walton County Public Schools talk about his customer journey and what they're doing with DocuSign today. We will then pass it to Tom for a product demonstration showing a couple of different solutions to help you modernize your back to school experience coming up. And last but not least, we want this to be interactive 
and we're going to host a great Q&A today. So we're going to hop into just a moment to consider our safe harbor slide here about today's presentation. While you're considering this information, let's go ahead and run our first two poll questions and we invite everyone on the line today to participate. So for the first question, are you currently using any digital signature tools? We'll give everyone just a couple more seconds there. All right, and we can move on to the second question. And that question is, have you struggled with any record management? All right, let's go ahead and close those questions. Please submit them and we'll move forward with the presentation. So some common ground for all of us on the line today and those that watch this in the future. Every school and district has a system of agreement, whether they know it or not. And what is meant by a system of agreement is a place where you prepare, sign, act on, and manage all of those processes that drive the purpose I spoke to. That's students getting services via IEPs, that's making your school environment physically safer due to all the challenges we've experienced through procurement orders. Maybe it's buying that laptop, right, for your one to one initiative to mitigate learning loss. There is a process usually paper-driven, that dictates the purpose. And DocuSign is here to help. What that looks like is from a front office and back office experience, all of these are common ways that agreements outline the foundation of public K-12. These are all real ways that DocuSign is serving schools across the US today. Today, like I mentioned, we have over a thousand public K-12 customers uh, in every state. And we are proud to serve them and derive value to the stakeholders and families that they're serving. And thank you so much, Andy, for being a part of today. We really value you as a customer. What can you expect, right? What are the main buckets that DocuSign expects to drive value at your district? It's all about employee productivity, doing away with those manual tasks and giving full-time employees time back in their day to get back to the purpose. Why are they there? To serve students and deliver education principles. Next, also very important, is turnaround time. We can all remember the days of sending everything home in a backpack, hoping that that permission slip, that technology fair use agreement could sign on time. Delay, 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 right? DocuSign is here to help you improve that turnaround time. These metrics, by the way, are an average across all of our 1,000 customers in the public sector K-12 space. Last but not least, how frustrating is it that we can experience and talk about this? You finally get that agreement back, you finally get that contract or that IEP back, but information is not correct and you have to start the process all over again. We are here to help mitigate that risk, mitigate that challenge, and ensure that information is captured correctly the very first time. Without further ado, I'm gonna pass it to our, our great customer, Andy, representing Walton County School District. Andy, on to you to talk about your customer journey. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff, and thanks everyone for having me. Uh, Walton County Schools came across an opportunity to modernize our process with DocuSign, and we really couldn't have been more pleased with our journey. I've been with the district for about two years and have really been eager to make some of our processes more efficient and modern and I actually found one that was a huge success. Let me start by taking everyone back to March of 2020. We had uh, just released all of our paper contracts to almost uh, 1,000 certified staff members. And after hours of printing and sorting them, uh, we hand delivered them to each school. That was the process for years and years. Um, they were coming back left and right, and then all of a sudden we shut down for COVID. We came back to the office in June, but it wasn't until January when a teacher had asked for a copy of her contract. So I went to go look for it and searched high and low. I called the principal and was mortified that I could not find this entire school's contracts. Uh, 
so she said that she remembers uh, specifically handing them to me right before the day of uh, uh, our last day from COVID. And I, I just panicked. I, I continued searching frantically, looking for them. Um, and then she called me uh, shortly thereafter and asked me not to judge her. But uh, she actually found them in a locked cabinet where she had placed them before we went out for COVID. So I'm sure many of you have an experience where something was misfiled, lost, misplaced have stacks of paperwork that need to be filed. Um, furthermore, we often have to go back to those paper files uh, to give copies of contracts to employees or principals and, and so on and so forth. Due to COVID and, and a desire to really improve our processes, we opted to go with DocuSign for this year's contracts, the 21-22 school year. Uh, we received approval by the superintendent just weeks before uh, they were due to be distributed. So I called DocuSign and they dug right in and guided me through the process. We, we got a demo scheduled, uh, went through that. Everyone here at Walton County looked at it that uh, was, was a key stakeholder. And we all agreed that this really sounded like a fantastic upgrade to our process. And so we moved forward with it. Uh, DocuSign quickly sent us uh, the new vendor paperwork an invoice and coordinated a call with an adoption consultant who helped us get the template created and, and ready to, to, to roll out. This all occurred in less than two weeks. Within 24 hours of, of sending the contracts out, over half of them were signed and returned and filed in a manner that we can find it instantaneously. We could track all those that had not signed their contract, and it was very easy to follow up with, with those folks. Um, aside from the people who didn't sign their contract for this year, we met our deadline, which uh, was a very tight deadline. Copies of the contracts uh, are now in real time that employees can go and get them themselves. Um, or if, if they do happen to call HR, we can easily log into the system and email it to them or print it for them uh, without leaving our desks. Since this went so smooth, we continued to leverage DocuSign's products and purchase more envelopes for uh, new hire paperwork. During COVID, we did update our new hire paperwork to fillable PDFs, but this did require new hires to download it, save it. Uh, some could type into it, some still filled it out manually. And then they either had to email it back to us or just hold on to it until they came in for onboarding. It, in theory, was great, but a lot of people still didn't do it. With DocuSign, there's no reason to download the forms, print them, or even wait for someone to officially sign the forms. Over 98% of our new hires this year have completed the paperwork well in advance of their onboarding date. And this has given HR really time to review their paperwork for errors before they come in and even get them entered into our HR database before they even arrive for onboarding. When creating this uh, packet of, of new hire paperwork with DocuSign, we were able to incorporate some logic that uh, ensured common errors were avoided. For, for instance, uh, for those of you in HR, the I-9 form is notoriously uh, riddled with, with errors. Either people forget to fill out a required field or they put the wrong information in there, whatever the case might be. Uh, or on a direct deposit form, a routing number is nine digits and oftentimes people miss uh, uh, key something and add in a digit, leave one off, so on and so forth. So with this uh, DocuSign template, the rules will not allow uh, an employee or, or a new hire to submit the forms without satisfying these rules. So then we also were able to incorporate an, a, a, a piece to this that does not require them to add redundant information. So even though multiple forms might ask for the same type of information, for instance, first name, we have it uh, set up so that the first name will carry out through the rest of the forms and they only physically enter at one time. This new method has really reduced the onboarding time from over 30 minutes per new hire to less than 15, and that includes getting everyone fingerprinted. The errors in the paperwork are significantly reduced, and we're able to work in a more proactive environment versus reactive. 
then the best thing is we noticed that we can read the handwriting of 100% of our new hires since it does come out in a clean typed format. As I mentioned, our processes are not the most modern and one unknown going into this project was how certified staff and new hires would embrace this technology. As far as contracts, we see, received an abundance of compliments and even thank yous. We've heard on numerous occasions that our employees and new hires are familiar with DocuSign already from purchasing a home, refinancing, or other firsthand experiences. We believe that this brand recognition has really instilled trust in the platform and signers have embraced the new technology. Since this platform is internet based and it is mobile and tablet friendly, the user experience has been pleasant from the feedback that we've received. Walton County is currently looking at other ways to leverage DocuSign's products with our needs. We're excited to think about integrating this with our HR database and other internal systems. We're also really intrigued enough with the product and have received such great support that we've recommended other departments to take a look at ways that DocuSign may increase their efficiencies, improve their accuracy, uh, and reduce costs. So our journey with DocuSign has been a pleasure, and we really look forward to future implementations with other processes here within our school district. I, I really hope that you found this valuable and see how much uh, DocuSign has, has played a uh, vital, viable role in our, in our new year. And, um, Hope that you can see the value that it could potentially bring your your district so i'll go ahead and uh, turn it back over to the docusign team andy thank you so much uh from everyone here at docusign you're a valued customer and, and we appreciate you doing this with us and we're we're very encouraged and excited to hear about your experience we're always open to feedback so thank you so much uh without further ado i'm going to pass it over to tom vanderveld uh, on our solution engineering team as he's curated a couple of demos to assist with modernizing your back to school experience. Over to you, Tom. Thanks, Jeff. And thanks, Andy. That's a very powerful testimony. I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Everybody should be seeing the DocuSign e-signature web console. First and foremost, welcome to this webinar, Modernizing Your Return to School. My name is Tom Vanderbilt. I'm a solution engineer at DocuSign, and I work with K-12 and school districts day in, day out. So my intent today is to walk through a couple of curated examples to Jeff's point, uh, an IEP, which we're going to deliver via SMS, a personnel action form, which we are going to be performing and filling out in a self-service fashion. And then I'm going to be delivering a bulk of student handbooks to some students in a customized manner using our feature called Bulk Send. So we're at the home screen right now. Um, I'm going to be stepping through at least the first three of these tabs, home, manage, and templates. And this is what your admin or admin team will be seeing on a day-to-day -day basis as you manage your DocuSign envelopes. Also to Andy's point, DocuSign is a cloud service. There's no applications to download. There's no IT architecture to deploy. We're operating system independent and we're also device agnostic. All you need to start sending out envelopes using DocuSign is the internet, modern browser, and an account. And as you can see here, I am using a fully featured developer environment. So for our first example, we're going to be sending out an IEP via uh, SMS. And in this case, I know that I have sent it to myself. The admins uh, bucket here in this, this uh, particular row of open envelopes lives in this particular action required field where we're going to be updating this number one to putting a number one in the completed bucket here. Now, I know that the, I have sent this to myself. So for those of you already familiar with the primary delivery methodology of DocuSign, which is email, you probably have already seen the gold review document button but I've actually sent this via SMS. So I'm gonna stop sharing my laptop screen and I'm going to start sharing my mobile device screen. So in this case, I have a text message from the console telling me I have a document to sign and review. That gold review document button is the exact equivalent of this blue hyperlink here. So when I click this blue hyperlink, I'm going to enter the signing ceremony exactly as I would if I had accessed it via email. I'm going to allow my location. And this blank screen is where I can put in some message or have some messages put into me from the admin. Now, when I click this gold continue button, I will be brought into the template itself. And it is worth noting, none of your signers needs to have a DocuSign account in order to proceed and begin signing uh, any envelopes they receive. Since I am the admin, I do not need to check any box to agree to any electronic records and signature disclosure, but you will be seeing that 
uh, at least in the next signer and certainly through the next several of examples. So I'm gonna click continue and you'll see here the system has automatically recognized that I am on a mobile device, hence the blue uh, tab here that says mobile friendly. What I'm gonna do so we can view the document in its entirety is actually disable this just so we can look at it. Now, imagine this is a very long document and I am seeing this for the first time. When I click next, it is going to bring me to the first field I am responsible for. You can see here I'm signing as Jim Demo, but I'm signing as myself, Tom here, on a mobile device acting as parent, guardian, or surrogate. Now, when I click the signature block, again, I am the admin. It is going to remember the fact that I have signed a number of documents and I am not going to be prompted to draw my signature or select style. You will be seeing that though in a moment. I also have some radio buttons I'm responsible for here and I'm going to fill in each of them as we step through. And when I click the second radio button saying that I have received the billing parental notice, the system automatically recognizes that I have completed all the fields for which I am responsible on this uh, document inside of this envelope. Now I'm gonna click finish because I have been prompted and I'm gonna be redirected to a landing page of the admin's choosing. Now, in this case, I have done so, I've picked uh, the particular school district with some public facing forms. I have done this entirely on purpose so that I can segue into my next example. So I'm gonna stop sharing my phone screen and start sharing my desktop again. And we're gonna go back into the web console, refresh and actually inspect this open envelope. Now to Andy's point, an envelope can be a very simple one signer, one document use case. It can also be several signers with conditionality. It can be onboarding packets. You'll notice as I went from the home screen and clicked on the waiting for others, I have transitioned to the manage screen and I can inspect who is next in terms of my signatories and in terms of my recipient workflow here. And I am waiting for someone to whom this has been delivered via email. Now, I know this is my persona, Pat, so I'm going to step into Pat's email inbox and begin signing as Pat. This should look familiar to anyone who has signed using DocuSign before, and I have, I'm stepping through this so that you can see, just as a refresher, what the uh, email delivery methodology looks like. I'll click the gold review document button, and as I stated earlier, your signers will need to agree to the record and signature disclosure. It says that I am providing a uh, legally binding signature as well as a limit of liability for your organization. When I check the box, I'm allowed to proceed. I will click continue. And as before, except via laptop, I'm gonna click on the guidance button and be brought to the signature block that I am responsible for. In this case, I will click on it and I am prompted to either select the style or I can, if I'm on a mobile device or if I have a, um, like a tablet or such, I can begin to draw my signature. Now to Andy's point, it's nice to know that uh, your signatures are going to be legible and we can select any of these styles. This is gonna make sure that we can all read the signatures that are being uh, selected and input into these forms. I also have a couple of radios I'm responsible for here and I wanna demonstrate a simple conditional field. If I click yes, the guidance ribbon disappears and I can step through and finish this particular envelope. If I click no, I need to give a reason. This is a great way to obfuscate some fields that if you were to present your signers with may be a little bit confusing. And this way it is conditional based on your signers interaction with the documents. And we can extend this into a number of examples. For our purposes, I'm gonna click finish. And although in this example, there are several more signers, we're gonna complete this envelope so I can talk about the management portion of the system of agreement. Now, after your signers complete this, they have the capability to download this uh, document. Uh, if there were more signers in the group, they would still have this capability. This is totally unnecessary because all of your signers are going to receive either an email or in Tom's case, an SMS that tells me the envelope is completed and allows me to grab a completed version of it. We also all know what this uh, icon means. We try not to say that out loud at DocuSign. I'll click no thanks and it will be redirected to the forms page just as before. So I'm gonna to return to the console update my numbers and we should see a one in the completed envelope bucket here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm now going to inspect this completed envelope. We will have clear indication that all of our signers have signed. And I'm also going to bring up as the admin your capability to inspect the history of this envelope. This is basically the 10,000 foot overview of all the activities associated with this envelope. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it a step farther and download this automatically generated non-repudiation certificate that is automatically uh, generated upon envelope completion. So what this means, both for your own records, for audits, or for the instance where Tom comes back next week or next semester and says, I never signed that, I never received that, I don't know what you mean. Your admin, your group, your school district can tell him, we delivered it via mobile device. We see that you viewed it at about 1120 and you signed it remarkably quickly. You signed it in about a minute and here is the IP address you signed from. The most important piece about the certificate of completion is that it is legally admissible, it is automatically generated, and it is going to accompany your envelope wherever it is you end up putting it, either whether it lives in the console for as long as you like, or whether you push it to a backend system of your choice. Now, since we've completed our first envelope, we have also taken, uh, we've had a chance to look at my redirect page, which was some public facing forms. Now, in this case, our second example involves a signer stepping into a web page and filling out one of these HR forms without any interaction from your admin team at all. No service tickets, no late night phone calls, no emails. I don't know how to fill this out. I don't have Adobe on my computer. I don't have Doc on my computer. I lost my admin password. You can drive your signers directly to the page of your choice and tell them if you need to fill out a personnel action form, all you need to do is click upon it and you will enter in the signing ceremony as soon as you give a little bit, a bit of information about yourself. So I'm gonna use my second persona, Ben. I'm gonna fill in Ben's name and email. And once I do, I will be allowed to enter the signing ceremony exactly as before. So I have name and email. This information is gonna be passed directly into the document. And I'm gonna talk about how to set this up as a template in a moment before I go into my third example. So I'm gonna review these documents. I do have the capability to finish this later, which means the admin can remind me about this at a later date. And when I click continue, I have some information I need to provide. So I can put in a little bit of information here. Uh, this is a, a request form. You'll notice I have my first validation here. If I do not enter in a proper social security number, it will not allow me to proceed. I also have a drop down here through which I can select the location. I have a date picker, which is a second example of a validation. Uh, earlier in the year, we did have a lot of instances and complaints about folks still filling in 2020. This is a great way to avoid that every single time. And I'm actually going to pick a new hire. The effective date will automatically show up. I can fill in some radios for be it a teacher or a temporary. I can also, you'll also notice I have passed this name to Andy's point throughout this document by only filling it once. And I'm going to put in uh, my own name as Ben here. And I will click, quickly fill the rest of this in and put in some other team members that, put, that need to review this. Pardon me. We'll put in some other folks that are going to be part of this interview team. And once I am finished, we will uh, proceed through this envelope. You'll also notice I have some check boxes here. If I check these boxes, conditional fields will appear. I'm going to leave well, those well enough alone. And this will be redirected now to folks at the district office. We have probably two more signers in this. And when I click finish, uh, I will send this along to those next sets of signers. Also to the point here uh, about uh, hiding personally identifiable information, we have automatically obfuscated uh, Ben's uh, social security number with asterisks. And this is something that we can set up at time of template creation. When I click finish, I will be redirected much the same as before. And what I'm gonna do is return to the console, refresh, and we will talk about the other two signers in this document. The third signer in this workflow is actually rather important because it is a group. It is a department that is going to sign. And I'm gonna talk about that as soon as the admin has signed. Third and technically final way we can sign outside of regular SMS and outside of email is the admin's signature, which can be performed inside of the console itself. So our second signer is the admin, that's me. I can sign directly inside of the console without having to leave the tab of the browser. Since I'm the admin, I don't need to agree to terms and conditions. I'll click continue. I will offer my signature. The system will automatically recognize that I've completed everything I'm responsible for. Obvious date stamp is present here. And when I click finish, I will be sending this to the HR department. I'm not gonna go over the management piece once we have completed this portion or this particular envelope, because I wanna talk a little bit about how I set these templates up, as well as go through my third bulk send example. 
I'm going to inspect this final envelope, which is this personnel action form. We have clear indication that two out of the three signers has signed it. And we have one more recipient in here. And as you can read here, it is an HR department. This is an example of a signing group. What this means, and technically I only have a group of two here, what this means is if Leo is on PTO, Pat can sign on Leo's behalf. It is essentially a first come, first sign scenario. So we can mirror whatever kind of organizational structure you have, Pat and Leo have uh, equivalent responsibility to sign this document. So what I can do now is go into Leo's inbox or Pat's inbox to complete this particular example. I'm gonna go into Pat's inbox um, and just let you know that it is there. But I wanna step through Leo's because Leo is my Spanish speaking persona. And I wanna demonstrate that the system has automatically translated the body email language into Spanish. And the context menus are also automatically translated into Spanish. So I'm gonna step through this quickly, but it is worth noting that when you offer your signers for whom English is not their native language, they're going to be far less reluctant to complete this information. I'm gonna put in full time, temp to part time. I'm gonna put in a number here. You'll also notice the tool tips are also in Spanish. And I'm gonna put in standard eight hours per day, contract type, pay step, and salary, which is uh, gonna be a number. And I'm gonna enter in a transfer with a date and an account number. This is also a number validation here. When I click sign, I'm going to, you'll notice here the uh, context menu is still in Spanish. I will click adopt and sign, and I have now completed our second envelope. So I have a, a capability to get a, to save a copy of this. I'm going to say close, and I'm gonna to return to the console after closing this tab. I'm gonna step into the templates tab, since this is where I spend the majority of my time as a solution engineer. Now you have the capability from the home screen to send envelopes directly by dragging and dropping files into this now activated box or clicking start and send an envelope. But the real value in using DocuSign comes when you take a repeatable process and apply a role-based participant or recipient workflow to each and every single one of these forms. This is what you have seen so far. What I wanna walk you through is how to set up one of these examples and I can do so instead of clicking use, I can click on edit for my particular template. I'm gonna do this before I step into my bulk send example and I wanna show you how to set this up. You'll give your template a name, a description. You'll add your document or documents either from your local machine or from a cloud service provider. You will add your recipients and you can set a signing order. If you do set a signing order and add any additional recipients, they will automatically be added in sequence. You can set roles. Of course, the roles are gonna be the same, but the names uh, will change. Delivery methodologies, responsibilities in terms of signature, whether or not we want to authenticate our signers could be as uh, brute force as an access code, could be as elegant or complex as a, pardon me, as a, an ID check or a um, SMS auth code as well. And you'll see here, I've pre-configured my uh, department head so that the signers or the senders are not allowed to uh, modify this. This is great if you have some forms where you already know that role is gonna be cemented in place uh, going forward. Of course, this is my signing group consisting of two folks. And as I click next, uh, I will be brought into the template uh, uh, field creation screen. To the point of Leo and my Spanish language persona, if you want to change the messaging, it's as simple as clicking the box. You want to change the languages, you can do so here. This is a big differentiating feature between us and any other actor who pretends to be in this space. We can change the subject and we can customize the messaging to every single one of our recipients if we so desire. We also have the capability to set reminders. This is a great feature. Today is Thursday. I'd love to receive this before the weekend is over, but since I won't be sending it out until this morning, the reminder won't go out until 24 hours now, but every day thereafter. Very simple to set up, checkbox, a couple of numbers. I'll click save. We have some options for brand and some other things, but I wanna show you how I drag and drop the fields directly into uh, this particular envelope. Now, we have a couple of different signers. Each of them is color coded. This is gonna help your admin keep track of who is responsible for what and on what page. This is a very simple example, but you can imagine in a multi-page, multi-signer example, uh, it may be a bit more difficult to remember who is responsible for what and on what page. 
This is very easy, Dr. Sennison, make it very easy for you to remember who is where. And I'm gonna click on at least one of these text fields. Now, this particular field for social security number was dragged and dropped and put into place earlier. And by uh, automatic nature, these are required. If you wanna change the required capability here, it's as simple as checking the box, it is now optional. I'm going to delete this and inspect this particular text box that I have dragged and dropped into this particular area of the envelope. When I click on validation, if you follow me on the bottom right-hand section, you'll see we support a number of them out of the box. You have seen several already, social, numbers, and date. I use these all the time. For you higher level IT folks, we also support regular expressions. And you'll also notice I have some hashed fields here. This uh, is an example of all of our conditional fields. Setting up conditional logic is as simple as clicking on the trigger, in this case, a radio button, clicking on conditional fields, and you can see I have a number of rules already set in place. Our radio buttons are automatically numbered. So what this means is if I click radio one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight here, I'm going to show each and every one of these fields here. Setting validations is very easy, very powerful. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click save and close and get into my final example, which is an example of bulk send. Now for you folks who have performed a mail merge before, you're probably familiar with a CSV file. In this case, it's going to act as a routing file for your recipients. And instead of some required fields, we are going to be using read only fields. Now I use this all the time for contracts. Andy can probably speak to this uh, even with, with more flowery language than I can, uh, although I do this on a day-to-day -day basis. This is where you can allow um, your signers to receive a customized version of their envelope and then have some read-only information. So in this case, our student handbook is gonna be going to three students, strictly for illustrative purposes. These are the emails they're going to be sent to and each of our students has an advisor that is custom to each student and that advisor has an office that is custom to each student. So I'm gonna step into our uh, second student here, Pat, and show you exactly what it looks like to sign this student handbook that she has received. Once I sign the student handbook, I'm gonna show you how to set it up. And it is as simple as matching the column headers to the data labels. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. So let's step into Pat's email inbox, click on student handbook, beautifully branded email from the school district. She'll click review document. This is a long, a long, um, a long uh, um, example here. And so um, what I'm gonna do is when I click the guidance ribbon, it is going to bring me to page, I believe late fifties or early sixties in a very quick fashion. I'll click continue, I'll click start. It'll bring me all the way to the bottom. And as we said, Pat, this is her advisor. This is the room, this is her signature. This is gonna match the routing table in the CSV file. Pat, Miss O'Keefe and room 256. Our other two uh, students is gonna look exactly the same way. I'll click sign draw, upload, or select my style. And at this point, it's gonna be routed back to the, the central office. So I'm gonna click finish and talk a little bit about how I set this up. It is as simple as matching the uh, data labels to those column headers. And I'm gonna come back in to student handbook, click edit. I'm gonna skip past this first screen and click next and show you on this particular envelope example, once I scroll all the way to the bottom, where these fields live, that we have advisor, and under data label, I have advisor, which will match Ms. O'Keefe, and advisor office, which will match this. So this example can be extended to many other use cases. Um, teacher contracts is one of them. We, we did a webinar uh, much earlier in the year where we did exactly just that. That is the extent of what I had prepared. I hope this would add some value for your, your school district. Definitely see how we can save uh, time and labor and stack those savings over time. Uh, thank you for your time and I'll pass the baton back to the group. Thank you so much, Tom. Um, let's go ahead and trigger the next two poll questions before we get into our, our live Q&A. All right, so this question is, do you feel your school is modernized in your approach? And we can go ahead and trigger the next question, our final poll question, poll number four.
Would a paperless environment make you satisfied at work? All right, and as you take a moment to answer that poll question, I'll pass it back to Kevin and team to moderate the live Q&A uh, at this time. We're glad to answer any questions that you have today. And thank you to Andy and Tom for the great presentation. We'll all be available to answer any of your questions. Thank you so much. Great, Jeff, thank you. And uh, yeah, just a reach out to the audience. We do have some time. If you have some questions as a result of the demonstration or uh, of Andy's uh, customer journey, uh, please let us know. We can add them to the list that we have here. <clears throat> but in the meantime, uh, we have uh, one question that came in, especially I think after uh, Tom, that, that great demo, how long would something like this take to implement uh, into a district? It seems pretty sophisticated. I know it's cloud-based, but uh, it still seems like it, it might be something that would be a significant uh, amount of time. Maybe uh, Jeff and uh, Tom, you could break that down. Yeah, I'll uh, glad to pass it to Tom to speak to it first and then offer some insight on our implementation programs and packages as well. Thanks, Jeff. So we, we normally take a crawl, uh, walk, run approach to our implementations. Um, we tend to show a lot of low hanging fruit. There is still a lot of low hanging fruit to be digitized. And you would be very surprised how quickly one can stand up an example of some of these templates. Once you start using these templates, we find that we have departments clamoring to use envelopes because they see how easy and how intuitive the DocuSign system is. Uh, and the e-signature will basically uh, blend into uh, several different departments um, and the use cases basically stack one upon the other. But ultimately, um, the implementation uh, process can take, um, we, we'll work with you on, on what exactly that timeline will mean, but your primary use cases, we can stand up remarkably quickly. Yeah, and just to emphasize, uh... Tom's point. And Andy, I actually love to hear from you on this in just a moment as well with your experience. But um, DocuSign being about a 6,000 employee, give or take company, uh, you know, a third or more of us are dedicated to our customers 24 by seven. We have a robust implementation amount of resources across our e-signature tools, our contract lifecycle management tools, uh, train the trainer methodology. I know as a teacher, it's like, great, do I have to learn this every time or can you train me and I can train others? Uh, we offer a variety of implementation services, but Andy, I'd love to just kind of uh, get your take on your experience with implementation. Yeah, so uh, we, we went from concept to actual uh, real life with contracts in less than two weeks. Um, so, so literally had not even reached out to DocuSign uh, hadn't even really thought about the logistics behind it, uh, but went from concept to execution literally uh, in, in less than two weeks. So uh, now the onboarding paperwork, uh, because there were so much, uh, there were much more intricate details there with the paperwork and the fields and so forth, we did do that as phase two, uh, but, and, and that did take a little bit longer just because of the, the, uh, details that were behind it, but still uh, within within probably uh, a week and a half, two weeks of really uh, uh, dedicating some effort to it, uh, we were able to stand that up on its own as well. So again, nothing that was too dramatic uh, in, in length. Well, that's, that's, that's impressive uh, in terms of the amount of time. Uh, another question coming in, uh, what makes DocuSign different from other products on the market? I know there, there are a ton of forms processing and sort of automated things. Jeff, maybe you can start off and talk about where, uh, you know, I'm sure you have your, your finger on the pulse of the market um, and where do you see uh, DocuSign uh, as being distinct? Yeah, I appreciate that question. And it's a fantastic question. Um, I think, uh, across three buckets, uh, largely, um, you know, at the heart of our partnerships and relationships is trust, right? And that trust is gained and honored uh, through a track record of firsts, right? DocuSign are the innovators. We are first to market, not only with e-signature and being the industry leader there, but we are expanding into other tools like contract lifecycle management, SMS delivery. So a track record of firsts and innovation. Uh, I would, I would, say it this way, I don't know if marketing would say it, we have a relentless uh, 
commitment to our customers, right? And I think Andy could speak to that. We are all invested in serving our customers. Um, and we're hoping that you feel that today uh, via this chat. Last but not least, um, specifically in public sector, K-12, local government, uh, we are FedRAMP moderate. So we own and operate all of our own servers uh, in the United States. Public K-12, local government, federal government, et cetera, we have a government cloud to partition away all of our public sector data away from our commercial business. So that utmost security, and right now we know cybersecurity is a big deal for everybody. So those three buckets, I, I would say really are distinct. And also if I can add a fourth one, uh, it's the point we made earlier about uh, implementation. You know, more than a third of our company dedicated to customers 24 by seven. Um, Tom, did I miss anything? <laughs> Speaking of 24-7, we, we drive to five nines uptime. Uh, anybody who has used some of our competitors may have been surprised during business hours that the system did not work. Our system is bulletproof to that degree. Fantastic Great. point. <clears throat> Great, thank you. Uh, now, Jeff, I know earlier in the presentation, you had a slide where you were talking about uh, cost saving and, and, and time saving uh, by using DocuSign. I think, you know, when you look at the education space versus maybe other verticals, um, those sort of metrics might not be something that traditionally um, would be thought about in, in, in the back office. Can you go a little bit in deeper to show like why those metrics are important to say, a, you know, a principal's office or a district's uh, front office in terms of uh, saving time and money and the importance of that? Yeah, certainly. Um... That's a really, a really distinct question and a good question. Um, I'm going to answer it from uh, with my teaching hat on, right? With my background in special education and doing district level work. Um, it's back to the point I made at the start of the presentation. There is a purpose and there is a process to drive that purpose, right? The last thing any full-time employer or employee of a school district wants to be doing is chasing paper, right? They want to see the outcome of getting that process complete, we sign up to be public servants because we like to serve, right? And so DocuSign is here to help uh, mitigate risk in that process, reduce that paper chase, if you will, uh, with the manual sending and receiving. And ultimately in talking about IEPs, we're talking about compliance, right? There's deadlines to meet. We have to understand the quantified impact or the risk of missing that deadline, right? I've been a part of meetings where uh, an advocate, right, on behalf of the student, rightfully so, is a part of the IEP meeting. It's all recorded. And it's like, hey, are we delivering on the promise that we made this family and this student for an IEP? Are we doing our best? So DocuSign really is about maximizing, you know, that full-time employee count and giving people time back to do the service they signed up for uh, at large would be what I say. Andy or Tom, uh, anything that you'd like to add to that point? Hey, Jeff. Yeah, I, I would. I would just from our perspective, even though we could we could get down into the details of the dollars and cents difference, uh, I, I think there is a huge component here, and that's the end user experience. You know, in in a lot of different situations, uh, specifically HR, from my perspective. Uh, Employee, employees have plenty of options of places to go, and, and uh, we, we want to maximize their experience from the get-go, and offering such a uh, technologically advanced and, and seamless and clean process is huge uh, from, from a recruiting standpoint, and I could uh, envision that working the same way with our parents of, of the district with IEPs or, or other things. Uh, student handbook, things like that. It's, it's also not just the pure dollars and cents, but it's also the, the uh, perception that that puts out. Right, so it's, it's not necessarily about saving money or time, but just uh, giving people a sense of security, that their information is secure, that the forms as a parent of three, I know, like did that form get to where it was supposed to be on time and uh, if, are all the um, are all the box ticked right? And uh, when when you have a, a setup like this, you can feel more confident. Yeah, Kevin, uh, with, with DocuSign, there's no more the dog ate my homework, right? Yeah, it's yeah. off the table, right? 
Uh, and that, that brings to a, a question I have that has the pandemic uh, changed user behavior to where these technologies, Andy, you were talking about, uh, you know, before that, you know, people were, had used DocuSign in other environments, but probably weren't used to it in the school environment. Now that we're all forced into this kind of remote setup, um, have you seen a, maybe a, a greater acceptance of these things? How has that accelerated um, your use of these technologies in your district? And once we go back to normal, uh, will it go back to normal or do you see yourself staying uh, you know, in this sort of setup? Yeah, so uh, from, from my perspective, uh, interestingly enough, I onboarded somebody yesterday and they filled out some forms with a pen uh, outside of the DocuSign process um, and, and they, they signed it and they asked me what to do with the pen if we sanitize them afterwards. So, so still at this point, we still have people that are embracing uh, uh, this, this uh, concern over, over all of that kind of thing. So, so I definitely think that there are uh, advantages to this and, and that uh, some of this is set in stone now. And, and I don't know that we're going to reverse uh, uh, some, of the, some of the things that COVID has brought to us uh, and many would argue rightfully so. Yeah, and if I can kind of uh, add into Andy's point, I appreciate sharing that. Even I sometimes I'm like, ah, what do I do with this pen? Is it sanitized cup, unsanitized, <laughs> right? That's a real human, uh, what we're living in together with empathy. Um, Kevin, when you asked the question, the first word that came to my mind is adapt, right? We have to adapt. We can't go back. Uh, that's our opinion and certainly what our customers are, are showing and telling us. Um, and really, if we think about that adapt piece, it's about equity and access to those processes for that purpose. If we don't adapt and leverage industry leading technology like DocuSign, people get left behind and that, edu you know, that, that learning gap becomes greater, right? And so we view it here at DocuSign, our, part of our job on this team is ensuring that we're closing that gap alongside of our educators uh, would be my opinion. That's great. Yeah, that, that certainly is um, insightful. Uh, we're starting to run out of time here, but there's one other question that's come in. Um, you know, talking with Andy and his experiences in his district, what other big education customers do you have? And is, is there a certain tier that you, certain size you have to be in order to be a, a customer of DocuSign? Talk a little bit about the landscape there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, please take down my email here on the page if you have any questions. We have an entire uh, section of our website dedicated to publish customer stories, big and small. There's, there's no limit to answer it directly. We work with the smallest school district all the way up to the top tier, you know, top 10 districts across the U.S. There's no limit. Um, you know, there's a lot of commonality in the challenges these districts face. Maybe the magnitude is different based on population and students uh, coming and going due to the pandemic, but it is something that, that we look to serve uh, every district, if we could, across the U.S. And how about in, in terms of, is it just K-12, uh, or are you working with higher ed as well? Yes, so our team on the phone today is focused on the public sector. We have an entire team dedicated to higher institutions of education, charter schools, private education. We serve the breadth and the gamut of private and public education. Great. Well, I see that our time is just about up. So I'm gonna uh, wrap things up. I'd like to thank our presenters today for a very informative presentation. Uh, and I'd like to thank all the audience members for joining us as well and, and for providing the questions. As a reminder, you'll get an email within the next few days that contains a link to this recording along with the slides. Thanks again for participating and, and have a great day.